Hey everyone, this is Nick, and whether you like Apple or not, it's undeniable that they managed to create a well-integrated experience between all of their devices and their online services. That's what we call the Apple ecosystem. But once you're in, it makes it also very hard to get out. What happens if you try to replace one part of that ecosystem? Let's say, for example, macOS with Linux. Oh, I bet you didn't see that one coming. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. How well you can still use all your Apple services and devices if you move to Linux. And also how well I can segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab, or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below, and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. The first thing will be the basic necessities, as in your Apple account, email, contacts, calendars, the general stuff. This is pretty easy. To add your iCloud email address to any desktop mail client on Linux, all you have to do is enter these parameters. The server for receiving email is imap.mail.me.com and it uses SSL, so turn that on and make sure the port is 993. The email is your iCloud address and for the password, you can't just use your regular Apple ID password. You will need to generate an app-specific password from this page, for which there's a link in the description of the video. Remember to copy that password, you will need it for the next steps. As per sending email, the server is smtp.mail.me.com, SSL is also needed, and the port is 587. The address and password are the same that you entered for email reception. Now, for contacts and calendars, depending on the program you use, it will be more or less easy. Gnome Calendar can add Apple iCloud calendars, but Gnome Contacts doesn't let you add it as an address book because it's not supported in the Gnome Online accounts. With Thunderbird, with the TB Sync and CalDAV provider extensions installed, then it makes it super easy. You just have an iCloud logo when you set up an account and it works. Evolution and the KDE PIM suite should also support all of that out of the box. Inside your application of choice, the parameters to enter are the following. As the calendar address, enter caldav.icloud.com. Your username is your iCloud email address, and your password is the app password you generated earlier. Same goes for contacts, except the address to enter is contacts.icloud.com. Everything should now sync nicely to the app you use and with your other iDevices. I think adding a GNOME or KDE online accounts provider for iCloud would be relatively easy since it's all static server addresses and just one login and password combo. So if anyone is inclined to try and work on that, it could be cool, just saying. You paused the video to watch that, didn't you? If you prefer using a web interface, you will be happy to know that there is a new iCloud portal that lets you access all of that online by logging into iCloud.com. Not only does it let you access your email, calendars, and contacts, but it also has web apps for a lot of your iCloud stuff, including notes, drive, photos, reminders, and the iWork suite, so pages, numbers, and keynotes. So let's take a look at notes and reminders first then. You can access both through the web portal, which means you can also create a web app for these two things, using either a Chromium-based browser that supports that feature, or with the Web Apps Manager app from Linux Mint, which you can also install on other distributions. This will be your most convenient way, as there is no way to access iCloud nodes or reminders on a third-party application. They don't use an open protocol as far as I could find. 
The good news is that these web apps are kind of fast and so they won't be terrible to use and also they will be added to your menu, you can add them to your favorites, so there's that. The bad news is that they only have the basic features. Notes has font styles, checkboxes and tables, but it can't add images to a note. It can preview them though if they're already there. Reminders is even more basic with no support for any of the advanced conditions like date, time, repeat, tags, locations and more. It just handles lists and tasks and marking them as done, which is very disappointing. iWork apps like Numbers, Pages and Keynote are also all accessible from here. They are the web versions and they aren't as feature complete as the desktop clients, but for quick edits to documents people send you, they will do the trick nicely. You can create new documents, download them locally and upload them as you want, on top of sharing them and exporting them to various formats. I'd love to be able to dismiss that iWork suite as useless, but honestly, Pages and Keynote are actually really good for what they do. Now, Numbers is an abomination that we won't talk about here. It's terrible. Now, for photos, the web interface is serviceable as well. You will get your albums, a list of pictures, you can upload photos manually and have them show up on all your other devices, but you won't be able to edit them from here. There is also no auto-upload app that will let you send pictures from your desktop to your iCloud photo library either. You will have to do manual uploads, but that's okay. It's generally the opposite that you'll want to do regularly. Send pictures from your iPhone to your desktop. But there is no way to automatically sync these photos to your desktop. You can't automatically download them when there's a new one added by another device. You will have to download them manually each time. Okay, that's not entirely true. There's a command line utility called iCloud Photos Downloader that you can run as a cron task or manually that will download these automatically, but it hasn't been updated in a while, so use it at your own risk. I left a link to it in the description. As per files stored in iCloud Drive, this one will also only be accessible through the web interface. You can't mount it as external storage or auto-sync files to a Linux desktop, which kind of sucks. The web interface is good, it lets you download and upload files, but if you want to use your iCloud Drive as a syncing solution to have your documents shared between devices, that won't work. If you want to automatically sync your files between a Linux desktop and iDevices, your best bet is probably to use something like Nextcloud or pCloud or Mega. There are a ton out there that work with all your devices and they're probably all better than iCloud Drive as a storage solution anyway. If you use Apple Music, then you will be happy to know there's a fantastic Linux desktop client called Cider. You can install it from Flathub or as a snap, a Debian package and an app image, as well as from the AUR. Once you're logged in, it will pick up all your music from Apple Music, playlists and all. It has a system tray icon and integrates with the media controls of your desktop, which why does it have a system tray icon then? It's very, very customizable and it even offers the various mixes and discovery features of Apple Music. On top of having two different UIs you can use, the scored rich presence integration and a plugin system. It's an Electron app though, so don't expect it to be light on resources or ultra fast. But honestly, after using it for a month or so, it's really, really fantastic. Great application here, highly recommended if you use Apple Music. iMessage, the thing most US citizens cite as the reason they stick with Apple and that the rest of the world generally completely ignores because there are far better options out there iMessage doesn't exist on Linux or anywhere else than on Apple products. There is simply no way to access your iMessages on Linux. No web interface, no app, no third-party client. It's a closed source program and protocol. And so unless Apple decides to offer a web interface or to open the protocol, you'll have to keep using your smartphone or tablet to answer these. As someone who lives in Europe, this is really not a big deal. Like literally no one uses iMessage or excludes you if you're not using iMessage. People use WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Signal, whatever else, and they're all better options than iMessage. Now, what if you want to plug in a device and grab its contents on Linux though? Well, that's supported. By default, when plugging in your iPhone or iPad, it will show up as a camera device, provided you accept that access on the pop-up that appears on that device. 
it will show up with a DCIM folder, although the folders inside won't have explicit names or anything, so locating a specific album will be tricky. You will also get a documents mount point, which has files for some applications, but honestly, I didn't find a use for that specifically. It will be mounted as read only, so you can't transfer files to it. But you can do that using iFuse. I left a link on how to do it in the description of the video. It requires the command line, but it's pretty efficient. Not as efficient as using KDE Connect though. KDE Connect lets you sync stuff between a phone or tablet and a Linux desktop. The Android version has more features, but the iOS one still supports a few cool things. The desktop component should be installed by default on your KDE Plasma desktop, and on GNOME you can install the JS Connect extension. Don't forget to reboot your computer afterwards, it never worked right after install for me. Once that's done, open the iOS app on your iDevice, open the KDE Connect or JS Connect settings, and provided your device and computers are on the same local network, they should appear, and you can pair them. On iOS, you can share the contents of the clipboard, you can send photos or videos, send regular files, use the device as a slideshow remote, run commands, or use it as a virtual touchpad. You can also send files to your iDevice from your Linux desktop, and they will show up in the Files app in Local Files in the KD Connect folder. Note that on iOS, KDE Connect cannot really run in the background all that much, which means that you will have to keep it open for these features to work. On Android, it works better in the background and it also has notification support because the OS is more permissive with what applications can do. Now, can we conclude that Android is a better OS than iOS? If I say no, will I get a ton of angry comments? Now, of course, there are plenty of things you won't get, like AirDrop, which doesn't work on Linux, but that you can replace with KDE Connect, or the continuity features. You won't be able to start an email on your iPhone and pick it up on your Linux computer. You can share the clipboard with KDE Connect, though, but it's a manual operation. There is no Apple Podcast integration, so you won't be able to sync playback with your desktop, and there is no mouse pointer sharing between iOS and Linux. And you also can't sync your Safari bookmarks and passwords to Linux. Although you can always use Firefox or any Chrome-based browser on your Linux desktop and on iOS. Because on iOS, every browser is basically Safari in disguise, so you'll get the same performance and compatibility, but with a syncing option. So yeah, that's not really an issue either. But still, if you're deep in the Apple ecosystem, but you would like to move to a more open OS like Linux on your desktop or laptop, it is feasible. You will lose some features, but not that many. So yeah, I would say it's pretty usable if you don't mind using web applications. And you could always replace all or most of that stuff with any open source alternative, like Nextcloud, for example, which is what I use on my desktop and all my iDevices as well. But if you want to stay in the Apple ecosystem or progressively leave it by replacing each part one by one, then you can absolutely switch to Linux and do that. And if you want to replace that Mac with a computer that supports Linux, then there's always today's sponsor. Tuxedo is based in Germany, but they ship worldwide a huge, huge selection of Linux laptops and desktops. By which I mean that they run Linux out of the box, which makes them way more suitable to run Linux than buying any old Windows computer and crossing your fingers for everything to be supported and to run, or spending hours in research. When you click the link in the description to buy a tuxedo laptop or desktop, you know that Linux is going to run on it with minimal or zero tweaking needed, which is pretty cool. They have a big, big selection for every price point and every need, whether it's Nux, gaming laptops, high-end workstations, small laptops, big laptops, you name it, and you can configure them with a ton of various options. You can have your own keyboard layout laser etched on the keys of your laptop. You can have your own logo engraved on the back as well. It's just very, very customizable. So if you need a new device, you want to support Linux development, you want to make sure it runs Linux, click the link in the description below and get yourself a laptop or desktop from Tuxedo. They are really, really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can always dislike it and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this video on YouTube, there's a PayPal link in the description, and there are links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. 
Both get access to a weekly podcast where I talk about Linux, open source, tech, my personal life, the channel, everything. It's on every Monday. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover for the next month on the channel. So if you're interested, both links are in the description. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.